Okay, so we're going to continue on today. Um, this is exercise 224. Um, basically, we're shifting from doing the day rendering to doing the night rendering. And hopefully, you got to the point where you had the, the day rendering sorted out, and it became relatively easy to, to it will become relatively easy to, to move on to the night rendering. Um, I went through and I updated a few things in my, in my model. I put a piece of art on the wall uh, for the fun of it. Um, and so we'll, we'll include that in the next round. Again, that's in the block that will then come in. I was having some trouble with a lot of my materials, so I was going back through and reassigning materials. Some of them may not be updated just yet, um, which I can solve, but you don't need to wait around for me to, to continue to update those. So once again, I'll go back to um, my exterior view that's already set up. And as with before, if you already have the daytime scene with the lights included in it, it's easy to do a save and then a save as, and you can then use those lights at night. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save As. And I'm going to go to today's folder. And I want to do a new folder for the fall 2015. And I'll drop that in. And I will call this, um, call this Night Interior. And I'll go ahead and click Save. And I ended up losing a few lights in this file, so it's going to take me a little bit of time to review. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So the view that I want this time, and, and as I promised before, I'm going to use a different kind of light here. I'm going to use a rectangular light because I want to be able to show this staircase, and I want it to, to glow, the bottoms of the stairs to glow, and put a light underneath because that's a common request. Um, so I'm going to use a rectangular light to do that. Uh, and so I want to be able to show you that, that as a strategy. Um, one of the things that I need to do is in establishing this view again is to change. Um, and I think because it's interior, I'm going to go from 28 to 18 millimeter, which is going to let me see a little bit wider angle. Um, and then let's go ahead and zoom in on, come on, I love it. Man. Let me unlock a few things here. And let me go for a new layer called lights. Make that current. And that'll let me lock off the environment layer. OK, so then um, I'm going to kind of reorient my view a little bit to be looking through at the stairs. Looks like I have a bit of my bunch grass that's showing through the wall. Again, that was for the outside rendering. I'm not even going to see it in this. So it makes it really easy to turn that bunch grass off um, so that I'm not actually looking at it. And that's not a bad view. And I'll go ahead and save that view. So let me go to um, Set View, Named Views. And we'll save this. Uh, and we'll call it Interior Stair 01. I'll go ahead and say OK. It probably wouldn't hurt for me to put some lighting in here so that this room has some lighting as well. Um, but we're going to do a couple different things uh, to start setting this up. The first thing is we have to set the background environment for nighttime instead of daytime. So from a sun standpoint, we're going to go ahead and, and assuming you had your sun on its own layer, we're going to turn the sun layer off completely because the sun's down, so we don't need the sun. Okay? So I'll go ahead and turn the sun off. The alternative to that would be to select the sun and just turn the intensity way down. If you wanted to go as far as mimicking the, a full moon where there was moon shadows on the ground outside or something, you could do that with a sun that had an intensity much less than um, a normal sun. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off. And then I'm going to go to my V-Ray options once again. And before, under the Environment tab, we had a map for the skylight and a map for the background. I'm going to change those maps to something that's a nighttime. And so if we look at today's exercise, I have a night HDRI for you to download. Um, if you already downloaded the package of all the HDRIs, it should be included there as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to my night interior. And I'm going to load off of my flash drive a file called, uh, I think it's called Moonlight. Uh, HDRI, night HDRIs. Uh, Moonlit 3, right? I have a GI and I have a, a full version. I'm going to use the GI for the first option here, right? The GI skylight. 
And I'll use the regular Moonlet 3 here as the background. So I have those two available for me. Then um, I might need to adjust some of the intensity. Looks like the background was set at 5 from before for my sky. I'm going to go back to 1 and 1. Um, these should have already been assigned um, their environment and any rotation if it was necessary. Okay? You don't have to worry about the rotation. It's a skylight scene. If you're really worried about where the moon is positioned, you could go back through the same process, but I don't think it's a big deal. I would just go with it. Um, and so once we have those established, right, the outside environment is going to be um, for moonlight. Now, it's entirely possible that we're going to have to adjust the physical camera settings away from 200 because there's less light in the scene, but we'll come back to that when we get a little further down the road. So now it's a matter of starting to put in the rest of my lights. Right, so as, as with before, I'm going to work, um, and I'll throw a couple can lights in. Um, I didn't put any lights upstairs here, so it might be useful um, to adjust that a bit. And we'll drop some can lights inside there. Like that. And so I'll go, same, same strategy as before, I'll go to uh, Edit Blocks, Insert Block Instance, and I'll pick my off of my flash drive. Oh, it looks like I didn't save it there. My fault. Uh, did I save it there? No, that's my chair. Must be back. There it is. My can light 3 inch. I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll go ahead and say, OK. Oh, I made a mistake there. Um, when I picked it, I forgot to say embed and link. Right there, embed and link. Go ahead and say, OK. Replace existing material. And I'm going to snap it to that corner for now. Let me zoom select it on it. Then we have to do a little bit of, of adjusting here. So let's go move. Go this way by one foot, and we'll go this way by one foot as well. There, and then I want to copy these out, so we'll go to copy, and we'll do two feet, and then maybe four feet, and maybe six feet that direction, and we'll go two feet in that direction, four feet, and six feet. All right. So I put those in the corner for now. I could do more than those um, on the walls, but I'll come back to it uh, as I start to do the rest of the lighting. Now it's a matter of putting the, the spotlights in, as we've done before. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here to my spotlight. And I'm going to zoom in on one of these objects, I hope. And let me turn on center snap. Come on, there we go. And we'll do, I'm going to switch my view into wireframe mode in the hopes that I'll get a little bit better results here. And let's see. Let me zoom select it on this. It's hard because I'm looking up right now. All right, so let's try that spotlight again. Snap to the center. Come on. There we go. And we'll say a diameter of, um, or excuse me, a radius of one foot and a height, switch into the side view here, of one foot. There it is. Now, in the side view, I'm going to make sure that I move this so that it's below uh, my light. And then in the top view, I'm going to switch to wireframe. And I'm going to make some copies of this. We'll copy it. And then let's copy it going this way.
All right, and then I'll get rid of this. And so now I have all of those spots established, but I do need to adjust the properties of them. So I'll select each of them, like so. I'll go to the Properties menu. I'll go to the Light. We're going to change the color. It's 255, 214, and 170. There, I'll go ahead and say OK. My wattage, we're going to go to 40. And my units are going to be in watts. And we want an inverse square decay. That's good. And the rest of this looks pretty good. Okay, so all of those have been established. Um, since I'm here, I'll go ahead and select all of them. And I'm going to copy these down um, because I failed to save the version that had them in the lower floor here. So we'll drop them into the lower floor as well. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to my uh, interior stair 01 view. So I'm going to go to set view, interior stair 01, and we'll make this big. And we'll also look at this in shaded mode. So we can see that I'm going to see some of those lights there, and there'll be a, a matching set down below providing a little bit of illumination in those two rooms. I probably need to put some lights in here as well in this room. I'll come back and do that. But what I want to concentrate on first is putting some lights that are going to splash the bottoms of these stairs. Uh, and so I'm going to use, instead of the traditional lights that we've been using, I'm going to use a rectangular light. And the reason that I don't concentrate on rectangular lights early is because they're very arbitrary. It's not as simple as a bulb where you say, oh, it's going to be a 50 watt and it'll work. Uh, it's based on the size of the rectangle and how much power it needs is going to vary. So it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a rectangular light. It's going to ask me for a corner, so I'll use the stairs as a guide. It's going to say the length, which will go across there. And I'm going to do halfway, I hope along the bottom here to midpoint to create that little light. And you see that I get having a lot of trouble with my view today. There we go. You see that when I look at this little light, right, I get a rectangle with an arrow pointing in it. The arrow is the direction that the light is going to be pointing. Okay? I also need to make sure that it is below the surface. So right now it's coplanar with the surface. I'm going to go down by negative quarter of an inch, negative 0.25. So now it's below the surface, pointing down. Okay, So I have that one in installed, so that's good. I need to adjust the properties again. So we'll go to color first, 255, 214, and then 170. And then I'm going to come to my intensity. Uh, oops, OK. And I'm going to make sure that this is again in watts. And we'll start. You know, maybe at 60 watts, right? Now, under, under options, I do have the ability to say, is it double-sided or not? So do I want it to shine up and down or just down? Okay. I also have the ability to make it invisible, or do I want to see the rectangle of the light? And so in this case, I want it to be invisible, so I'll check that. Right? The, the decay is already set, so I do want it to, to have decay. And the rest of these settings are fine. Okay. So once I get here. I'm going to go back into my V-Ray options. I'll go to Output, and I'm going to pick a small size output, maybe even smaller than this. Uh, let's go maybe 300 by 200. Actually, let me get the view aspect so it matches here. Right, so it's small. Okay, and then under System, given the size of this, I may turn off the distributed rendering, um, and we'll give it a shot. I am going to save this before I try to do this render, just in case. And then we're going to go ahead and do a render. And this is the unfortunate thing with rectangular lights, is you have to do these trial runs to see how they're going to turn out and whether they're going to look the way you want them to. And so you have to be kind of patient. Once you get the settings dialed in for one of them, it's usually not too bad. Okay, so I know it's really small, but that was the idea to save time. 
Uh, but it looks like I'm getting a decent amount of, of light underneath. Maybe a little bit too much, in which case I might have to dump this intensity down. Again, it's going to be dependent on the size of the rectangle, so you have to kind of vary. If you have a really large rectangle, you're going to have to bump the intensity up. Um, and so let's go back to maybe 30, so it's about half. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this to a few more of the stairs to check on it. So we'll drop one there, and one there, and one there. All right, now that I have those copied into place, let's try it again. And we'll render. Something wrong went wrong with my copies. Let me try that one more time. Yeah, now we can see it. We'll go ahead and do that render again. So one of the big things about starting to do the night render is you're going to need a lot more lights. So during the, during the daytime render, you know, we threw a few lights in and a little lamp here. When you do the night render, everything's dark, or it should be dark outside. So you're going to need, it's kind of like when you're at home, you end up turning more and more lights on to light the rooms and whatever. So if you have rooms that don't have lights on, they're going to appear dark. Uh, and so you just want to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're compensating for it. So, it looks like my, my under stair lights are working. We're getting a little bit of reflections in the glass on either side, which is uh, part, of, part of what's desired. We're getting a little bit on the edge of that stair. Looks pretty good. If I had the stairs overlap a little bit more, I could probably get more out of it. Maybe my, my light's a little bit too big in these views, so maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller and adjust the power so it's right at the, the, the tread of the stair uh, versus being underneath. I'm guessing that maybe one of these was being shown. I can flip around be on the inside looking at the stairs this way and have a quick look at what the rendering is looking like and, and, and double check here. So in this, in this context, I never designed a fixture for underneath the stairs. So I'm going to have the, the light and I'm going to have the reflection of the light and the glass, but I don't have an emissive material underneath my stair that's representing the light itself. So I need that piece of it too. Um, if I'm going to do a view where I have the light shining down from the bottoms, right? The view that I have up over here on the other side is less critical because I'm looking at the stairs from the top side. So the fact that I'm not seeing the fixture underneath doesn't matter. If I flip around and I do it from this side, I am going to see the fixture from underneath, in which case I need some kind of a fixture with an emissive material um, to look at. So there it is. Um, so we can see the reflections of it. We can see the light being cast down. Now, if I flipped around and went back to one of the views looking out these windows and did the render, right? you'd see what the outside looks like. And it looks for me like the ones that I've done so far the outside is probably a little bit light, um, more city skyline where there's a, a little bit more ambient light. I think it probably needs a little bit of adjustment. And again, I'm doing all these test renderings when it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's very small so I can get a, just a quick sense of, 
oh, the exposure seems right. So here, my lights work. If we're looking outside the glass, I have, I have a, a night sky that's kind of a bluish, so it might be more late twilight than dark, dark. Uh, if I wanted to change that, I'd have to go into my options. Uh, I could change the HDRI, certainly, but I can also go into my options, uh, and then under environment, I could drop this down. Um, up makes it brighter, down makes it less, so I think it would be 0.5. Um, and I also might drop this down a little bit, 0 0.5, to, to address the ambient light conditions, and then I can re-render, and the sky should get a little bit darker. So it's a, it's a fine line of kind of adjusting what you want to see uh, in, this, in this ultimate rendering. Okay? So today's purpose is really to add a lot more lights to your render, uh, and then to establish an interior view that you like, that you can then render out in a higher quality. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's a lot of the same that we've been doing, it's just the next step of it. Darker scene, more lights required, you know, put the lights in. But you should already have a pretty good grasp of it, uh, of how those go in. Um, there are some rare kind of special requests that happen when we get into this stage of lighting. I want to do a certain kind of light. If you have something like that, let's talk about it and see what, what the ideal situation would be to represent that kind of a light. All right? Any other questions? No? All right. The rectangular light? Sure. So uh, let's, uh, I'll do it for the bottom stairs now, since I haven't done that yet. Hold on a second. Oh, I did have it right. All right, so there I am looking at the bottom stairs. Uh, I want to create the rectangular light. It's right here under rectangular light. It's going to ask me first for the corner of the light. So I'll pick this corner of the stair. Then I'll pick that corner of the stair. And then it's going to ask me for the, the, the other. So basically, it's creating a rectangle with one line and then the length. Uh, and so maybe I'll do it at halfway, which is what I did before. Um, but it's kind of up to you as to how, how far you want it. Right? The, the direction is already pointing down. If the direction is not the direction you want, you can select it and type flip and it will flip the direction to go the opposite way. Um, obviously, I want the light going down, so I'm going to type flip again, if I can type. There we go. And I also want to make sure that this light is not intersecting any existing geometry. So I'm going to move it vertically down by maybe a quarter of an inch, negative 0.25 inches. I could do an eighth of an inch. The point is it's, it's a little bit below the surface, so they're not colliding. Then I'll go through and I'll adjust my properties. Once again, under color, it's going to be 255, 214, 170. And I should really look up what colors of other light are. You know, these are this is standard incandescent light, but now we have LED everywhere. It's a little bit whiter, um, so I might need to change that. Um, I'm going to change this to watts. It seemed to work pretty well at 30, so I'll leave it at 30. I do not want it to be double-sided, but I do want it to be invisible. Right? So all of those sound pretty good. As before, first thing, I want to make sure that I do a test render to make sure that the first one uh, shows up. Once I have confirmation that the first one shows up, then I can copy that to each of the stairs. It is possible that the first one will look fine, and then you do the copies, and you'll get a burned out bulb. Copy it again. Um, it's just the way of the, the way of V-Ray. It depends. It depends on what you want it to look like. Um, and so let's, let's use that as, as an example. Uh, I'll, I'll cancel this for right now. I'm going to leave that light in place. Um, but let's say that I wanted to have a light that came out of this wall here. I'm gonna, while we're looking at this, I'm going to change um, out of being in the 18 millimeter, which is part of why my view is getting so wonky. And I'm going to go back to a 28, which should help the view a little bit. It's a little bit easier for you to see. It's not clipping things. Uh, and so let's say I wanted to illuminate the edge of this stair. Looks like the stairs don't quite intersect anyway, um, so I probably need a stringer. But let's say I wanted to illuminate the edge of the stair. I have different options, and I'll do them in different ways. So the first one up here, um, let's, let's do it with a spotlight. And so I'll go back to my spotlight, and we'll start with my diameter. 
Uh, I'm going to make this one smaller, but under similar um, proportions. So we'll say that my radius is maybe three inches, and my end of cone is, uh, we're going to do it slightly different. We'll say maybe 12 inches. I'm going to do it in that direction, and then I'm going to take it and we'll rotate it, excuse me, rotate 3D. from being there to maybe being at, I don't know, 30 degrees, something like that. And then I need to move this. It may help to do it in the top view. So that it's outside of the stair. So that it's shining something like that. And now we can look at it. So there it is shining on the stair. It's going to provide an, uh, an arc of light on the stair, okay, which is a different strategy than something with a rectangular light. So let me do one with a rectangular light. Oh, I should adjust the properties first. Hold on. 255, 214, 170. And I'm going to do a much softer light, so I'm going to do maybe at uh, 15 watts with an inverse square decay. Um, so there's that one. And then let me go ahead and do a rectangular light. So we'll do it here to there. And we'll do a height of, say, something like that. Notice that the arrow's in the wrong direction. So here's an opportunity for flip. So it's pointing in the right direction. I need to move it ever so slightly so that it's not colliding with the objects. So we'll say 0.25 inches. Move. Five inches there and so now that's going to apply kind of a diffuse light across um, the stair so let me go ahead and adjust the properties 255 214 170 and I'm guessing again this varies a bit but I'm guessing this is going to be much less so it's maybe a 5 watt because the square is smaller uh, I could be wrong and we'll make it invisible and so now I'll set up a view that sees both of these stairs kind of from the top. And we'll have a look at what those two look like. And so again, I'm using different lights, and they're going to look different on the stairs. So it's dependent on what the desired intent of this is, is going to be. Assuming, of course, that my bulbs aren't burned out. So we can see enough of it now. So in the rectangular light, which is starting right there, it's starting as if the light were right there and providing light that fades away pretty rapidly as it goes across the stair. The spotlight is pretty intense with just a single spot on the stair. So if I wanted to make adjustments to those, if I didn't like them, for example, the rectangular light might need a higher power. So maybe we'll go to 30 to give it more. And this, the I think the orientation is correct, but the, the diameter, it's too focused of a spot. So I want to broaden that up. So I can go back to create a new spotlight. And this time, I'll make my radius. Um, I did it at 3 inches. We'll do it at 12 inches. Right, And we'll do our height this time. Oops, let me do it this way. Right, uh, Of the opposite, so it was. It was 12 before, stood about 6 inches. All right, so much broader light. Um, we have to rotate 3D again. And it was at 30 inches, or 30 degrees. Whoops. My bad. we 
we go. And I'll go ahead and delete the first light, or better yet, let's put it on its own layer. So I can turn it off so we can kind of see the contrast. Uh, actually, what I should do is I should leave it on and then copy it up to the next stair, and we can see all three of them. So we'll go from there, we'll copy that to there, and then we'll delete that. All right, so now I have three different scenarios of how those lights are working. This one probably needs to be moved back before we do the render so that it's closer to the wall. So let me go back. Something like that. We'll jump back here and we'll do that render again. Again, small render size uh, so that this is a quick turnaround. Okay, so we can see a little bit more difference now. Uh, looks like I forgot to change the color on that light, but the, the concept is still the same. So the rectangular light is a very even light all the way across the stair, providing light that goes out the length of the stair. The spotlight here that was the much wider spotlight, I start with an arc, and that arc then spreads out towards the stair and decays toward the end. Okay, But this arc also casts a shadow along this edge, which lightens up this edge over here because the end of that arc is ending up down that way, uh, shining on this lower step. So we'd get a little bit more interaction between the lights. This one is still the narrower spotlight, so I'm getting a brighter light that's focused right on the stair itself. So depending on your desired intent, you can see that using the different kinds of lights really changes what it looks like. Um, and obviously you'd have to model what the, the fixture of the light would be that holds the, the light, but that really is going to matter as you shine the lights across the stairs. So what light you pick really varies. So today we covered a lot about the rectangular light. We've done the spotlight before. The point light, sorry, wherever that is. The point light is good for that omnidirectional light, a lamp or whatever. Less likely to use it in a context like this where you've got stairs and whatever. Uh, but you certainly get the idea of, of kind of how this works. Um, and so if I were to design in a little fixture um, that would then start to, to make more sense. It would look better than it does right now uh, because there's no source for that light. It's just the edge of the stairs um, are glowing. Okay? Any other questions? No? All right. So I will turn you loose uh, if you have individual questions. And like I said uh, before, when we g start to get into these days of renderings, you work on whatever you feel is most appropriate and post something at the end of the day that's tagged with this exercise number. If it's not exactly what I was talking about, if it's not exactly an interior night rendering, and you spent more time on the interior day rendering because you weren't done with that, post whatever you've got. Does that make sense? Right? It's kind of a self-paced from here to the end. Right? I'm going to keep throwing stuff at you day after day after day. You guys are trying to get to the, to the finish line. And however it works with you, you get there. 